Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 20th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Check out this plume of moisture stretching all the way back across the Pacific Ocean. This one goes all the way back towards the Philippines, across north of the Hawaiian Islands, and it's going to be pushing into the Pacific Northwest. We got multiple storm systems rolling into the region here as we go through the next few days, including a potent atmospheric river. It's going to warm things up, even for some of the mountain areas. We'll dive into those details and look at the extended forecast as we go through the video here this morning. Look at the Himawari satellite imagery. You can see this plume all the way back towards the Philippines. So you can nickname these atmospheric rivers, whatever your heart desires. And yeah, kind of interesting looking there, that plume of moisture. You can see China and Japan right there as well. The technology that we have today is quite amazing. So looking at yesterday, we did have some gusts up over 50. This is a Saturna Island and there is Whidbey Island. Look at that, checking at 62 miles per hour. hour. Cool, you hit 48. You can see Ellis Mountain hit 48 miles per hour as well. We officially had 47 miles per hour Dungeness Bay there right near Squim. And some gusty winds across the region, but not a region-wide windstorm by any stretch of the imagination. Bellingham at 44 miles per hour. We take a look here across some of southwest Washington and uh, Oregon coast, 54 miles per hour there. You know, uh, this was kind of a bit underwhelming here as far as the winds for Olympia and uh, Joint Base lewis McCord Air Force. The, the the JBLM there, let's just say. And uh, we've got Tacoma Narrows checking in at 46 miles per hour as well. We went across portions of Willamette Valley. Some of the models were showing uh, definitely more gusty winds with that last system. So a little bit of a failure here by some of the models leading up to this event. And you had to go across some of the higher terrain to really get more of the impressive gusts out there. Even the Oregon coast was not that impressive yesterday with the wind speeds. Ignore that 117 miles per hour there. So here we are this morning, and right now we've got, you know, fairly dry conditions across the region. Still some sub-freezing temperatures out there for places like Spokane. You can see currently dealing with uh, three miles in mist right now. 40s widespread here west of the Cascades. But we've got additional systems coming in here, so we're going to go over that here in a moment. And including some of the hydrologic outlooks here for some of the region, we're going to have some of these warmer systems moving in with possible flooding concerns. Things you can do, clear out your drain rains, you know, be prepared for the uh, the potential for flooding here. Watch out for those leaves and whatnot here. So, and, and also the frozen ground may exacerbate some of this flooding, especially east of the mountains, elevated rivers and streams early next week. So keep this in the back of your mind here. We'll be going over this over the next couple of days. And portions of Montana, check it out, ground blizzard conditions today and tomorrow. I just thought I'd share this graphic with you there. Great Falls National Weather Service, Montana, still very chilly east of the mountains. And snowmelt over frozen ground expected to talk about some ice jams out there for portions of Montana as well. It doesn't take too much precipitation to fall when you are dealing with frozen ground. It just runs off readily like the entire landscape is just one big parking lot. And if you want a nice affordable home weather station, click on the link down below to save 10% off. You help support the channel as well. So... Now let's take a look at where we are this morning. This is about 8 a.m., 9, 10, 11. There's noon right here. You can see there's some snow moving across Utah and Colorado, but pretty dry here across Pacific Northwest. Our next band of precipitation moves in as we go through tonight for Vancouver Island. It starts to clip some of the Washington coast very late tonight, and it's tomorrow morning. We start to bring some more rainfall towards the coastal regions. And then as we go through the later afternoon hours, it moves across Seattle, some of Portland there, eventually the Willamette Valley as we go through about 4 p.m. Some mountain snows are occurring with this initial system there, and this swoops across areas east of the Cascades as we go through very early Saturday morning, some higher terrain snowfall. And then the more sinister atmospheric river starts to set up here as we go through Saturday afternoon. It's going to be pointed at the Pacific Northwest for a while. Some very warm air aloft will be arriving with this. We're going to get some snow melt. You can see a lot of this across some of the Cascades here by Saturday afternoon is falling as rain for the Oregon Cascades and the Washington Cascades, except for the very highest peaks of British Columbia and the North Cascades there also. Now, taking a look at total snow Kuchera ratio here for the next few days. This is a 60-hour period. You can see we're dealing with some snow, mainly for the higher peaks. So, I mean, even Snoqualmie Pass, just a couple inches of snowfall here as we go through Saturday morning, probably melting ongoing at times. And then as you go through the day Saturday, definitely things are going to be melting across the pass areas for the Cascades of Washington and Oregon, no doubt. So let's take a wider view of things here. you got the European last night's run versus the GFS last night's run on the right, 18,000 feet, 500 millibars. 
So you might think we're dealing with this ridge and we're not going to get systems. Well, that's not exactly how it works here. We're going to be getting the precipitation from these systems as we go through the day Friday. And you can kind of see this. This is an atmospheric river look here. you got the ridging here across some of the southwest USA. Gulf of Alaska tropping, warm, moist, southwest flow back up into the area. Good model agreement between the GFS and the European on this atmospheric river coming. And you can see additional uh, frontal systems moving through during that time frame as well. And then we've got somewhat of a kicker system that's going to come through here Monday on into Tuesday. And some of the models are disagreeing on just how strong that could be. But the European has been showing a fairly substantial wind event here across some of the Pacific Northwest. The GFS is weaker with the system. That's something we really have to watch here, though, as we go through February 24th and 25th. We're going to be showing you more on that here in a moment. And then we kind of get a ridge setting up here, and we'll see what happens after that as we go. Now, accumulated max 10 meter wind gusts here over the next 48 hours. You can see we've calmed winds down here. Maybe still some gusty conditions out there, but overall we are on the downtrend from what we were dealing with yesterday with some more widespread conditions. Now, looking at precipitable water anomaly, I like showing you this map here. You can see this plume of precipitable water move up into the Pacific Northwest. Here we go with Friday's frontal system, and then the more sinister atmospheric river starts to point at the Pacific Northwest. Look at that trailing tail all the way back across the Pacific Ocean. And you know, again, you can name that whatever you want. Now, taking a look here at the European versus the GFS, mean sea level pressure anomaly. So here we go. There goes Friday's system right there. And then we deal with the atmospheric rivers. We go through Saturday on into Sunday morning. And another system moves up towards Haida Gwaii. But then the stronger one approaches. And you can see even the GFS has a decent low pressure system. But this is much more of a beast on the European. The pressure gradient coming up the coastal regions would be very windy and cause some widespread pretty windy conditions across the region here. It's a pretty classic track for a fairly robust wind event here across the Pacific Northwest. It's not the big one here, at least not with this, uh, not yet. But if that were to intensify a bit more and come roaring in here and continue to deepen as it was making landfall into Vancouver Island, then we could be talking about something different. But it's still a fairly robust system, even on the GFS with another frontal system pushing through. So we'll watch that one over the next couple of days as far as wind uh, potential. And I'll show you that here quickly in the European. We're going to scroll ahead to that system. And you can see that would be packing a punch here. You can see the surge up some of the Puget Sound straight to Wanda Fuca there. Some southerly winds across the Salish Sea. Big bent back occlusion coming up. Some of the Oregon and Washington coastline. Vancouver Island. So yeah, that could be kind of interesting there. We'll continue to watch that. I don't trust the European just yet. It's been hinting at this at times. Uh, some of these systems at times, then it will pull back as you get closer to the event. So again, we're not going to get too caught up in that just yet. We're going to wait for some better model agreement between it and the GFS. Because you can look at the ensemble mean here, and the control run might just kind of be a bit out to lunch, but it does show that robust system. But again, there's a big difference between a 975 millibar low deepening at landfall into Vancouver Island versus a more garden variety 990 millibar or 988 millibar low that is weakening as it makes landfall here. So we'll be watching that over the next few days. Now, taking a look at rainfall potential, day one, day two, nothing. Day three, we start to introduce this marginal risk, which may get upgraded at some point to some slight here for uh, some of the region. This starts Saturday morning and through Sunday morning. There's day four. This goes Sunday through. Monday and then at day five with additional systems moving through. We're going to keep that marginal risk ongoing. So if we take a look at the latest in the European. So here we go. 24 hour running totals. You can see this brings uh, close to an inch for Seattle here as we go through the day Saturday. Some bigger amounts showing up across some of the Willamette Valley, some of the Oregon coast, the Cascades as well. Some rain shadowing going on east of the mountains and northeast of the Olympics also. But there is flooding potential with that, especially since a lot of this is going to be falling at rain fall uh, up into the higher elevations of the Cascades. We really got to watch this period coming up. They haven't issued the flood um watches just yet uh, across the region, but that may be coming here later today. Now, if we take a closer look at 24-hour precipitation totals, we're just going to scroll out here towards about um, Sunday morning, and you see some of the big amounts across the Willamette Valley coastal areas here as well. And then you can kind of see as we go through Sunday afternoon, you're up over an inch on the European 24-hour period, quite a bit of rainfall for Seattle, and again, big rain shadowing effect east of the mountains there. But once you get across the higher terrain, those rainfall amounts do pick up and we may have some flooding concerns even east. 
Now, total precipitation in inches, we're going to scroll out here until about, what, February 25th or so. And you can see it does bring uh, about three inches of rainfall to Seattle. Same thing for Portland, Willamette Valley. Again, pretty big rainmaker rolling in here as we go on in through uh, next week. Now, GFS, look at these 24-hour totals here for Seattle. So we really got to pay attention to that. It could cause some urban flooding there. And again, some pretty significant flooding concerns could develop if these precipitation amounts do end up verifying. You can see the Willamette Valley. Some areas up over two inches, potentially in a 24-hour period. And again, Tacoma, Olympia, and a lot of this falling is rainfall across the higher terrain. A GFS showing you about, what, February 25th there as well, rainfall in that time frame also. Um, uh, European Ensemble, we'll scroll through this here really quick so you can kind of see the good agreement as we go through the day Sunday, wrapping up these 24-hour totals. And again, kind of targeting some of the Willamette Valley in southwest Washington with some big amounts. Now, looking at the Ensemble means Seattle's still all over the place here. These atmospheric rivers can be on the narrow side here and just slight differences and shifts in their track can mean is obviously going to mean, mean different amounts for the Seattle Metro, but you can see the ensemble mean right around an inch. There's Portland, even more. Look at the latest control run, 1.6. The ensemble mean getting up towards 1.3, 1.4 inches of rain in a 24-hour period. Here's Eugene, something similar, the latest control up towards two inches. And look at Mount Hood, for example. This is a cross section of temperature. There's 10,000 feet, and there's the level that we're looking at, the Mount Hood ski area, 5,380 feet. Um, but yeah, definitely that warm air coming in here as we go through Thursday night and lasting with us all the way on in through the day Monday. There's Paradise Mount Rainier, big time rainfall incoming here, and a lot of this is going to be falling as rain. Sorry about the email alert there. A Crystal Mountain ski area as well. Again, the warm air kind of rushing in here with that atmospheric river. Snoqualmie Pass, a lot of this is going to be falling as rain there. Also exacerbating some of the flooding risk. And this is Swift Creek up towards Mount Baker. Look at the control run up over four inches in a 24-hour period. And again, the snow level rising dramatically. The base of this is at 4,400 feet there. So a lot of rain coming. Now, atmospheric river plain view. I've been showing this the last few days. This is the top down view of things here. We measure atmospheric river uh, strength based on integrated vapor transport and duration of the atmospheric river over any given area. Cross section here, low lying, warm, humid air mass pushing into the region here and uh, you can see why we would have such dramatic rain shadow effects here with our big mountain ranges out there and these atmospheric rivers slamming into those mountain ranges now looking at snow depth in inches so we're starting to like 106 here let's pay attention to that one you can kind of see how we degrade the snowpack and it kind of eats away at some of the lower elevations as we scroll on here so we are going to have some melting and compacting of the snow up there so not a great pattern there for really building the snowpack but hopefully that comes as we go through the month of March. And speaking of which, we'll take a look at this. Uh, we've been watching this on a daily basis. Gulf of Alaska troughing dominating here as we go through uh, towards the end of the month of February. But then we start to change things up. And the European continues to show some, some of the ridging out over the Pacific Ocean and troughing here for Western Canada. Every single model run continues to show it. So uh, crossing our fingers for that. I mean, if you want some cooler weather, if you want an early spring, though, that is not a good look for you because uh, the trough continued around. But that's sometimes how La Niñas go here in the Pacific North. Northwest. We can keep these cool, wet springs going all the way on in through April. So, yeah, we'll see how this turns out. Six to ten day. This is updated yesterday. You can see the west above and below average signal starting to creep in here at the end of February as well. This is eight to 14 days. We go through the first week of March and the below normal signal there starting to rear its head also. And snowpack. We'll watch this over the next few days. We'll see what we are done with here Uh as far as the atmospheric river is concerned. And again, I apologize. I should have turned the volume off here this morning on that. Um, but yeah, let's check before you go. Avalanche.org. We're going to have some interesting conditions there across the higher terrain with all this warming aloft coming in. And then we've updated the drought monitor. You can see we did extend some of the moderate drought there across some of the cascades of Washington. Um, but yeah. Not too bad, relatively speaking. Otherwise, here's the last 90 days percentage of average precipitation. You can see the deficit we're running west of the Cascades as well. And the average uh, temperature departure from average as we go over uh, the last 90 days as well. So we are wrapping up meteorological winter here as we go through the end of February and March 1st. Meteorological spring. Days are getting longer. You can kind of feel it there in the afternoon and evening hours as we stay lighter longer. I do enjoy this time of year. 
Um, I, I'm kind of up for anything. I'm, I'm, I'm dying for some more spring weather and some warmer weather as well. But at the same time, I don't mind having the cool, active weather here, you know, even some snow to the, to the eleva lower elevations or maybe some snowpack across the higher terrain as well. I like building that into the springtime also for a water supply. But anyway, um, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Watch to see what the models show, what that potential wind system as we go on into early next week. And I will talk to you guys then.